ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Within a matter of minutes, we will be receiving our brand new Bobcat T595. They're here. super easy to get into at this point. Yeah. Um, I notice how they, that one's not tucked in there like the old ones. You can actually, you know, uh, I use this, not that you're jumping this machine, but if you ever gotta jump something else, it's super easy to get in here. You can you can reach both your terminals. You don't have right. to go digging in there, worry about grounding something off. Yeah, well, uh, those those machines that, that that's negative a pain. Is cut up in there. It in is. The corner, tucked up in there in that you, corner. You gotta be a contortionist to get in there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's the biggest thing you're gonna notice on this machine, just the serviceability overall. Yeah. It, it makes it really user friendly. Um, that's what I noticed as soon as Jerry popped the door the first time. Wow. Yeah. They, they put it right there and they make it to anybody can work on it. You know, anybody can kind of find it. But back to this on the service checklist. Uh, you're gonna have a breakdown what they're gonna recommend every 50 hours, 100 hours, 250, 500,000, and then up to your uh, thousand hours on the minutes on that. So gives you a good gauge to kind of follow. And like I said, on the fuel filter. I, I personally stay about 50 hours ahead of that, if possible. Yeah. Um, you just, and if you notice when you're getting close to 250 hours without changing your fuel filter, watch your RPMs. If you feel like you're, you're 100, 150 RPMs off of what you're normally running at, probably time to do a fuel filter. Yeah. You know, that's, that's an easy way to gauge it, but I'd recommend just having one of them in the truck at all times, and it's yeah. about five minutes to switch one of them, and relatively easy to do, so right. you get the primer ball there when you do switch it, right next you to just it. build a little pressure up on it. It's uh, sometimes it's nice to have a two second guy here that one guy can be cranking a little bit, give it a little pressure, and right. you're right there, ready to go. You know, like I said, it takes about ten minutes to swap in and out. Yeah, that's a sales guy doing it. So yeah, we can do it pretty quick. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to getting used to these controls. I'm used to foot controls, but I know it's not it's not the way to go, and he wants hand controls. So it's it's one of those things that once you get some hours in it. Yeah. I started on the 753, 773s. I've always been hand and foot. If there was something, I came a little bit from the concrete world. If there was something I really had to get some exact grade on, I probably myself would still get a foot pedal machine just because I feel more comfortable in it. But yeah. my own 590 that I have is joystick. And I forced myself to go joystick this time. That's exactly because what we I know that's that's just the next generation. And really, when yeah. you're in there, if you're in there for more than a couple hours, just moving your wrist around versus your whole body, right. you know, at the end of the day, six, eight hours of pushing, really hogging stuff, you'll feel yeah. it in your knees, you feel it in your ankles, you feel it in your, you know, your hips. Right. And, uh, and people with big feet, you know. It's, it's hard, it's yeah. It's really hard, man. I hear that a lot. Or you get in and out when it's real muddy and then you start getting mud under your pedals and your pedals aren't cooperating yeah, right. You get mud under your pedal and next thing you yeah. know, it's not moving like it should, not moving fast enough. Yep. And yeah. Then you're fighting it all day, or you know, every time you get in and out of the machine. We did go with the narrow track machine. There was a wide track and a narrow track option. I wanted to be as narrow as we could possibly be to get into certain situations. I don't think six inches more wide would have made much of a difference, but six inches narrower could make a big difference. I will say to you, I've got quite a few of my customers that go with the 595, um, 
and we go with the narrower track versus the wider track. Now the wider track does give you a little more flotation, right? but at the end of the day, I tell people it's kind of the same analogy. If you've ever had a truck where you put the big tires on a truck, it looks cool, it floats, but at the end of the day, you don't have that power and torque. Mm -hmm. I feel like you get a little more power and torque out of this machine with the narrower tracks, yep. especially when you're out there digging you know, digging some hard grade in some of these different environments. So, right, I agree. Um, you do got the weight kit on this machine. Yep. Um, for all purposes, whenever you call in, you do have your serial number plate right here, so you can run that serial number and make sure we get the proper parts for you with the serial number break. You have a sight window right here. This will be your operating range for your hydraulic fluid. Um, just keep an eye on that after the first 10, you know, 10 hours of really breaking the machine in. Uh, we get some air pockets out of it. Uh, we can go from there. What do they recommend on the first hydraulic? When is the first change? Is it 250? Uh, you're gonna be right around, yeah, 250. So you'll come in and they'll do a pretty good once over. So since you bought the machine from Bacchia St. Louis, the first 50 hour service, we're gonna do the first 50 hour service free. You just have to cover the materials. So the oil or the filters at that point. Okay. I tell a lot of guys even to service their own machines, come in for that first 50 hour service. Cause at that point, you're gonna have an opportunity to have one of our technicians take a look at the machine and really Get some additional professional eyes on the machine. Make right. sure there's anything else. You know, I say take advantage of everything. Somebody who's used to looking at these every exactly. day. Exactly. They're gonna they're yeah. gonna be able to catch something that you know we might not. Everyday user might not see it, yeah. but uh, the guy working on it will. So, right. as far as the track goes, uh, they're gonna be very similar style as your other machine. You got the little door that pops right here for your track adjustment for the tensioning, which is the grease circs in there. Yeah. Uh, same concept. Now this undercarriage is quite a bit updated from the other ones yeah. though. You notice yeah. uh, with a double flange roller like that, it's a lot smoother ride in there, a lot quieter ride. You don't feel like you got that bulldozer effect that sometimes the track loaders you know come up with on the asphalt. Oh, definitely. <laughs> going from hard surface to soft surface, you're gonna you're gonna feel a big difference on that. Yeah. And just how I just love how accessible it is. It is cleanable. That thing. I mean, you could spend hours cleaning those tracks sometimes. Oh, and you can't really get in there between the rollers. Where yeah. here. The design with the rollers, there's more space in there. The material that doesn't stick up in there is bad. Right. And then you got quite a bit of room right in here that you get in there with a little spade. You can get a lot of the material out of there right. with power that washing. Before you even leave the job, yeah. Exactly. And it, it self cleans a lot too. Right. Um, you do have on this machine, you got the bar right here uh, for the arm support. Safe. If you ever get, yep. So what you'll do is you'll take those two knobs, you'll unscrew them off, and they'll go right here in the cylinder whenever you have the arm all the way all up. Way so. Up. Uh, just a good safety feature to have whenever you are working on the machine, having that in that position. Definitely. You got tie downs on the rear, and I didn't touch that yet. Tie downs gonna be right here on the machine. They're gonna have little stickers marking. Those are the proper way to secure the machine on the trailer. So you'll have two points on the back, and then up here on the arms, you're gonna have two spots right here too, uh, as, as well. You can just go bucket on that, right? You can do bucket if you yeah. want. Uh, DOT wise, you really they should have it on the arm. Machine. Yeah, and they really tight. You're supposed to have something on your attachment as well, but. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, four points of contact. That's how happy they are that day. Exactly. Four points of contact is the main main thing you're wanting to do for the safety of everybody. Yeah. Um, like we were showing you on the back, you got a whole bunch of grease zerks up here to the front on the bobcatch system. So you got the power bobcatch. Uh, you got multiple grease points in here on the pins and on the cylinders. Uh, that's something you want to make sure you get greased every, you know, yeah. six to eight hours. That's something we're not used to, those extra fittings on there. Right. Make sure I don't forget those. And that's just something, you know. Uh, I, I tell the guys have a whiteboard on your when you take your machines out, either do it in the morning before you go out or every night when you come back in and get a good routine set up. And if you do that, you're going to get a lot more life out of these pins, bushings, and it's going to feel like a nice tight machine for you know several thousand hours. Right. Um, as far as up here goes, uh, you got a safety step coming in. Whenever you do get in the machine, uh, you want to have three points of contact. So you open the door. I personally like to come in off the track because I got a little short stubby legs. So grab on right here on the track, take a step, take a step. Always have three points of contact when you can get in. Yeah. Sit down just like that, you know. Um, as far as inside the machine, there's a few things I like to tell everybody first is the egress on it. Uh, Bobcat's got two really good points of egress on the machine. Here on the front, you got these two on the door, little orange levers. If you ever need to pop the door and get out, uh, in an egress situation, you can pop these and the whole door comes off. Also in the back, you got a little orange safety triangle. As soon as you pull that, uh, the molding off the window pops down and it gives you a point of egress out there too. So these cab machines, uh, you got two points of egress in that, you know, in that Case situation. Comes up. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Which unfortunately does happen. It does. You know, you get, you get working on some of these areas. Uh, you know, for example, if you're working on a dam or by some water and the ground lets loose a little bit and you get the machine down there and uh, it might be, you know, down here in Freeburg, you got the strip pits. Yep. It might be 20 foot drop right at the edge of the lake. Yep. 
it's better to go out the back door than go swimming. That's right. So, um, as far as inside the machine, there's quite a few different functions and uh, different features. Um, the joysticks are mounted on the seat. So if you notice as I bounce, everything stays right here for the compartment. Uh, so it moves with you. It moves with you, and you can adjust the joysticks too. So they come forward oh, and nice. back. Same with the seat. The seat's going to go forward and back as well, so you can get closer up, uh, and you can really see, you know, you got a good vantage point sitting here as the operator. Um, we'll start here. To start the machine, you turn the key to the right. At that point, it's going to tell you to wait to start, so you got glow plugs. And over here, it'll say wait, has a countdown. Once everything's clear, you put your passcode in, and then you turn the key, and it'd start. Okay. Um, in order to operate the machine, you need to have this door shut. Now, on a brand new machine, what I recommend the guys doing is having one of these windows cracked a little bit because uh, the cab itself is a pressurized cab. So that what that means is it's going to be kind of hard with the seals. I mean, it's you'll notice it if you don't have the window cracked. You feel like you really got tug on the door until you first get you know 50, 100 hours on it. Okay. That's a good thing though. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I tell guys have the window cracked. It makes it a lot easier getting in and out. Okay. Um, put the safety bar down. Um, they're gonna recommend you put the seatbelt on as well. So you got a three point seatbelt back here you can put on as well. Once you have it fired up, you hit the green button. That's gonna release all your hydraulics. Um, the traction lock override system on this machine. Uh, at that point, with you have a joystick machine, you got tons of different features. Um, I'd highly recommend taking a look at the owner's manual and you got a cheat sheet back here as well. You got a little operator's guide right here. It's about 35 pages in here. Yeah, I'll be digging in that yeah. a couple times. Yeah, sure. real good reading material. It's, yeah. it's kind of a bummer. It's on lanyard. You like take yeah. it inside. You yeah. Know, good reading material in the evening. In the bathroom. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to. I give you that. Uh, we'll definitely have secret. to look into that. I've, as everyone um, knows, we're not used to this. Yeah. Amenity thing. So, so it, it breaks down though. It, it tells you some good information uh, with the joysticks. There's different settings, different sensitivity you can do. Uh, you can have it, you know, react a little bit more or a little bit less. And you can on change that depending on. You can change that on the okay. fly. There's no changes on that. Um, okay. And you've got different things you can set up with the tracks too, to where, uh, you know, if you're running different attachments where you need to go on an incline, you need to have a little more speed out of a left track or a right track. Um, you can change the compensation on here and actually adjust that a little bit as well with the Bobcats. So okay. that's uh, that's another day we can come down here and I can really yeah, play, we'll play with you on the joy. We can take a couple hours or just playing with the job joysticks. And do that. Exactly. So it's first tour of duty is cleaning seven acres. So. There you go. There you go. You guys will have fun we'll with have that. I have to call you out for that one. That's not too far away from you. So um, HVAC controls are going to be all down here on your left hand side. Also, you got your window washer fluid reservoir tank right here. Because okay. uh, you got the wiper with the, the wiper fluid on there and on the door. Yeah. Radio controls are going to be down here on the right. Um, you do have an option if you got a uh, input wire right here. You can plug it into your phone and hook oh, it up on nice. here, so you can actually have your phone run Pandora or some other features. Now this one to the right, that's going to be for your headphones. Okay. I get that call pretty often on guys telling me they tried to hook the phone up, it didn't work. Well, you got to make sure you hook it in the right input, right not work. the output. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, you do have the power bob catch on here, so that's going to be right over here as well. Okay. And then you have the selectable joysticks over here, so you have pilot controls or H pattern. Uh, pilot controls are going to be all the functions with the left joystick of driving. Any, whatever direction you point the joystick is the way it's going to drive. Yep. On the right stick, um, that's going to be all your boom and tilt operations at okay. that point. Now if you go to H pattern, that's going to be like some of the older case machines. Uh, if you've ever been out on the farm and you've been on one of those machines. Both the sticks drive you forward, both of them go back, and then in and out is going to be the different functions yep. of the tilt and yep. the left cylinder. So Which I have ran that, and like. that confuses me. That's very hard. Yeah, that, I think that's one of the hardest operating systems out there. You have to be there. so sensitive. And it is. I mean, just, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm sure I'll try it, but that's it not going to be the way I'm going to run it. It is. Very, very few operators have mastered that control, <laughs> but it is an option, right. and it's nice when you have, you know, if you got multiple people operating it too. Yeah, different guys options. have different styles. Sure, so. yeah. um, as far as, we'll get back, touch back on the HVAC. You got several different vent locations in here. You got some down here by your legs. You got some up here on your head, behind you. So you can turn them off and on. Uh, I think they've really made some major improvements on the HVAC in these machines. Yeah. As far as um, if you crank it on, personally the way I like to operate it is I'll get the AC cranking and I'll have my windows cracked, otherwise it'll freeze you out. Okay. Same for in the summer, in the winter time, I'll have the heat cranking on max, but I always have my windows cracked. And also allows me, if you have any communication with somebody outside right. the machine, you can still communicate with them outside. Right. So, 
That was the worst thing about that. That's an aftermarket cab, so those windows don't open. Yeah, they're just Constantly fixed. Open the door. <laughs> what? So You're better at sign language. It is, and one thing you can do with this machine too, being a cab machine, is you can take the door off, and there's a little plug right here, and you can have this door fully off. And there are quite a few guys, uh, especially when you get into more of your hardscaping, where you're going to have a constant pallet in front of you. Yeah. Um, you can have your door off. Right. But other than that, if you're not in a real dusty environment, uh, there's quite a few guys that take the green door off and sit in the shed. I have, they really only put on when it's real hot or real cold. I got a buddy that's got one. Uh, follow him on Instagram, but he's he's got the exact same machine. He said he had his door off all summer. Yep. He does trees mostly. Oh yeah. But he said it was just constantly open it and like you know with trees he was having to pick things up and then wanting to open the door and then you can't get the door open when the booms up a little bit and right. you, know, you know how it goes oh yeah now so i see it being off definitely at some point definitely yeah uh owner's manual is gonna be right behind the seat so the lumbar gonna roll forward and get the owner's manual tucked yeah. back in that little plastic container yeah it is uh vacuum sealed in plastic right now so um, I'd say just keep it like that until you, until you start digesting in it, read over some of the safety information. Yep. Um, as far as the auxiliaries and everything go, they're going to operate very similar to how your other machines are. You're going to have the auxiliary button right on the left hand side. Yeah. You just hit that and fire on okay. with your attachments. So. And then you got the button, the, the trigger is yep. lock it in. Trigger's going to be, the gonna be on the right joystick. You okay. just click that on and they call it the constant detent. So that'll allow a constant flow in the machine. Okay. Um, you do have quite a few different buttons on top of the joystick and that's where I'd recommend looking at the operator's handbook on whatever attachment you're using you can see what each button and what function each button does so okay. if you got some attachments that have that do multiple functions you know you can get rotate left or right up and down all the time and you can move the okay. down, so and how does that electric work where's as far as isn't the like the electric is that this so if you were yeah if you, if you get a attachment kit you can get an attachment accessory kit on this uh they can wire it to whether you have seven pin or 14 pin yeah uh so what i would do is take a look at whatever attachments you have the most of that's the direction we'd want to have set up for you okay. um and we can get that set up for you at that point okay. in the shop a um, couple things i did not touch on the cab and i'll point them out while i'm out here you do have a little valve right here pressure relief valve so if you ever get to the point with a cab machine you didn't drop your arms all the way down, you've already turned the machine off and you're like, man, I gotta put the passcode in and start it back up. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can take that valve and you pull up and rotate it to the right. It's about a quarter turn. What that does is it relieves all the pressure on the hydraulics on the arms, Okay. but it's gonna come down at the rate of gravity. So okay. if you have a full bucket, it's gonna come down quite a bit faster than if there's an empty bucket or an empty attachment out there, but right. it allows you to be able to drop the arm that extra couple inches and get your door open without having right. to start the engine up, turn it back off. Or if it ever breaks down. Exactly, or down. exactly if you're ever yeah. in a position where you need to get out of there as well, um, you can get the arms down at that point. So okay. um, that's that's kind of a quick run over on the inside of the cab, you know. Um, it'll you know, get us started. It'll get you started <laughs> and we can definitely, I, I think like I said, it's another day in itself. Uh, going into the joysticks but there's a lot right. of fun stuff and that's that's kind of a fun day i like having that having that day with a customer getting a couple hours and going over that with him because especially with you transitioning the joysticks you might have it on one setting and you just you're fighting it constantly and we can adjust it and you can tell me what you like and don't like okay you can zero it in more for the operator so yeah definitely. we do have it set dead in the middle right now it's not on the lowest setting or the highest setting so you got three options We've got it on driver mode two. Okay. So that's kind of a good one that the guy started it on. Started for sure. Especially because you've had other machines and you've been operating for a little bit. Right. If this was your first Bobcat and your first joystick machine, we'd probably start you out on one, at least for the first hour, hour and a half, and then tell you to bump it up to two when you get more comfortable with the machine. Right. But I think in your case, two is a good spot to start. So yeah, I can run a machine. I don't know about a joystick machine. Yeah. But I can run. I can run those machines well. There I don't you go. Know about this. So it'll, it'll be a new learning curve. It will. But <laughs> I, you know, when, when it's all said and done, after I figure it out, I'll prefer this. I know I will. Definitely. So, I'm ready. Oh, you want to hop in there and take it for a spin? Yep. I don't have a code in it right now, so we'll have to come up with a five-digit number. We'll, okay. do that, we'll do that offline. Okay. We'll set that up for you, and we can go from there. So I'll take that yeah. And then all you got to do is just click the key over.
be your biggest thing is pedals. You can, you can feel it, you know what I mean? Right. With the electric over hydraulics and stuff like that. Yeah. You don't necessarily feel exactly what your different angles you're at when you're cutting your grade, you know, and it's it, it makes it almost smooth and chewy. He wants it. He's got clunky feet. My older brother can't even operate a foot machine. He's, he's got like size 14. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, your other boots, your winter boots, are like lock up his whole feet. I can't move. Yeah. But that's the thing too. You get you get in there, you get coveralls on, and your boots, and if you got some mucks on or something, like right. Good luck, man. Well, and that you know, doing not only being able to do it, but when you're all tightened up down there, and you're sitting there trying to force your foot all night. Next thing you know, you know what I mean. Your, your calves all sore. Off. You yeah. got shin splints. And, oh yeah. Yeah, feels like you just skated a hard game. Yeah. <laughs> right. Played a shitty game. Yeah. Coach made you skate. Exactly, exactly. Well, I don't want to keep you any more than you guys need to keep you. Uh, do they got codes on those other machines or the keys? Yep, or? yep we got codes on those. Okay. You want to write them down or I was going to like stick a sticky note. You can probably yeah, clear them. Why don't you do that yeah. in a sticky note and then uh, yeah. I'm going to do this bucket and scoot it up and 